Pray Om Namo. So let's seek the blessings of Brother Mother, Brother Shamsun, Krishna Maharaj, Balko Pal, Gonitai, Shila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj, and the assembled devotees. I wanted to continue with the series on Sanatan Dharma and very important concepts. We talked about the Atma, the soul, yesterday, and the eternity of the soul, how Krishna really explains very you know, nicely and uh, thoroughly to Arjun about who we are. And related to that is the um, point about karma and reincarnation. Because if we are living entities who um, who live forever, but we are living in a world where nothing is forever, right? Everything changes. Um, so how do we reconcile our position here uh, with the eternity of the soul? So this is where karma and reincarnation are very important concepts to understand. And uh, Hinduism or Sanatan Dharma is a very central part of Sanatan Dharma. So the nature of the soul we discussed yesterday is eternal, does not die, will not die. Um, and I won't go into that because we just covered it yesterday. But we need to understand there are two types of bodies that um, the soul acquires in this material world. Right? And this is described in chapter uh, 7, text number 4. There's the gross body, which is made up of earth, water, fire, air, and ether. So what is ether? The others are quite easy to understand. Ether is like the gray matter uh, or, or the sky, for example. That element which cannot necessarily be seen, just like air, you can't see ether, but it exists um, as part of the gross body. So this gross body is just what it says, gross. It is not active. It's not alive. Earth, water, fire, air, ether is not alive. It is, these are material elements. And this is what our body consists of. So our body is already dead, <laughs> if you like. It's always been dead, always will be dead. But when the soul is in the body, it gives it life. It makes it appear to be alive. So this is important to understand that uh, this body has never been alive. We're so attached to it, right? We're so attached to it. And we're thinking that this is who I am. But it's actually dead. It's always been dead. Always will remain dead. It's just material elements. <laughs> And then there's a second type of body, the subtle body, which consists of three elements, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Now, what is the relationship between the two? Well, when the gross body is finished, the subtle body is never finished, not in this material world. Whilst we're in this world, the subtle body stays, stays with the soul, carries the soul into the next body. So the mind, intelligence, and ego stay with the subtle body. Sorry, stay with the soul. The subtle body stays with the soul. Into the next life. Into the next body. So um, this is quite interesting to um, understand. Where one does not get a gross body for whatever reasons, maybe sudden death, accidental death, suicide. Um, that gross body is not ready yet because of the sudden passing away of the person. So then the subtle body carries the soul. And that you will understand as a ghost, for example. Ghost well, I think that the Sorry? Part. I didn't understand the last part that when somebody dies by suicide or mm. premature. What happens? The soul has left the body, but the subtle mind carries the subtle body carries the soul, and that's why uh, ghostly beings exist. 
right? It's the subtle body, which is looking for a gross body to occupy. So often we see, you know, like uh, sometimes we see, sorry, um, somebody possessed. Uh, it's the subtle body is trying to take hold of that um, that gross body because the soul needs a gross body in order to function in this world. Subtle body is not enough. Um, so that subtle body goes forcibly into a gross body. But that gross body has already got a living entity in it. So there's a there's a there's a a, a competition, a, a battle within the gross body. So the person looks possessed because the subtle body uh, is trying to take over that body. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the a ghost or has a subtle body, but not a gross body. Yeah, that's correct. So, but there is a form of like cloudy appearance or something like that. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Um, sometimes it may become visible, especially to those who are realized souls, like Bhakti Vinod Thakur. You know, he oh. could see the ghosts when they appeared. Uh, he was very, very uh, renowned, you know, like a realized soul. Um, so, yeah, you, you, can, you can feel the presence. Because a subtle body, um, although not visible, it sometimes can cause disturbances, you know, um, by taking over the gross body or even outside of taking over any gross body, they may try to cause some, you know, just to let you know that they're there, for example, especially if somebody loved one is around, mm -hmm. um, then the subtle body may try to, you know, communicate somehow. But it's very hard because the, the person usually will not know of the existence of the subtle body, the, the ghost. So very, very tough. Very How hard. Will they find out? How will they get another gross, normal, their own gross body? Yeah, through the chan, through the normal channels. So that it'll, you know, the Yamadutas or the Vishnu Dutas will come. You probably the Yamadutas because, you know, likely to be people who uh, may not have been so pious in their life. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we can shorten our lives by performing a lot of sinful activities. By shortening our lives, we increase the chance of become ghostly body. Uh, by committing a lot of sinful activities, for example. So what will happen? Uh, in due course of time, the Yamadutas would come and capture that soul, capture and, and take it with, with the subtle body to its, uh, you know, wherever it's meant to go. Is it the time when they're supposed to die naturally anyway? Ah, uh, no. This no. is unnatural, yeah? Either through an accident or through suicide. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that when the young dutas come mm. to get, get that subtle ah, body, would it right. be, that would it be at the natural time? Natural death, yes. Yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. I think there will be so many different scenarios and um, uh, circum different circumstances that it's very hard to yeah. generalize, you know. But I think. Possibly, when the natural life is supposed to come to an end, they would they would come at that time. Yeah, that but sounds like they reasonable. will find salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds Sorry. really. Sorry, Prabhuji, I'm disturbing you. Mother Ben, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I understand gross body, but subtle <laughs> body, subtle body. This all emotion, isn't it? Is called it's emotional. partly emotion yeah. because the mind so, is extremely emotional. Yes, correct. Yeah, but but I am I'm confused. Uh, mm. when, you, when people uh, when anybody die, mm. uh, soul goes first, right? Normally with the subtle body, the subtle the body subtle. will right. carry the, the soul. Subtle body. Yeah. Because of we 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 believe or we just understand that that subtle body is always goes in next 
re reincarnation when the, the the reborn that time some some has going with them as well hmm. so but you i think you said that or i might misunderstanding that subtle body when accident or any uh, any incident happen not normal death that time you i am you said that that subtle body take the soul is it did you say that mm -hmm. carries the soul yeah so subtle so that means i don't know can you see that means that means i mean soul soul ne aloko lai jai chhe subtle body ke soul ni sathe subtle body jai chhe so jeev atma ni sathe इवेंचुअली थ्रू भक्ति we can we can empower the soul again but at this moment in time because of the disconnect from god uh the soul has become if you like it's it's it's, it's in a weakened position mm. yeah that's yeah. correct that's thank correct. you i i just i try to understand but still i'm very good <laughs> no, good thank you thank you question mata ji so yeah very good okay. very good now prabhu ji Hmm. So a ghost does have a a soul, isn't it? Oh yes, 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 yes. I mean that is the nature of the ghost. the The soul is has to be there. Otherwise, there would be no question of ghost. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Can you explain go in Gujarati ghost? I don't understand uh, word understand. Ghost that le enu sharir na sukhe booth. Oh, okay. Booth. I mean, khabar im to khabar me parme kama to me kai rite samjao chon. भागवदी <laughs> Uh, 222 krishna explains that we are not mind intelligence ego we are above the mind intelligence and ego this is the point what happens at the time of death krishna explains that in the bhagavad gita chapter 8 text 6 yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tyajati an उट we will attain that and krishna is adamant without fail <laughs> so now there's a few other things that determine what where will we go in our next life three other things okay one is what do you remember at the end of your life other thing is karma what have we done in our life right and then there's two other things our desire our ichha what do we want krishna will fulfill that and last but not least our consciousness where are we at generally our consciousness will determine our final thoughts but it may not be in a line alignment so there's four things that impact how we would go to the next life what we remember at the end of life our karma our ichha desire and our consciousness where are we at so let's look at karma three types of karma we do karma which is prescribed 
uh, our duties, our normal. We are born in a certain body, in a certain varna. We perform our activities according to the duties of varnashram. And that we will not incur sin. That's sinless. Like Arjun, Krishna said to Arjun, you're a warrior. You're a born in a Kshatriya family. You're, you have a Kshatriya nature. For you to fight is natural. To, for you to uphold the law is natural. You will not incur sin by doing that activity. So we have to determine what is our karma, what is our prescribed duty, what are we meant to do. If we do that, we won't incur sin. Because that's our natural position. V karma is forbidden acts, sinful activities, breaking the four rules, uh, illicit relations with the opposite sex, having eating meat, fish, eggs, uh, gambling, and um, taking intox intoxications. So those those things will take us in the wrong direction. And those, that karma will result in misery. It's the karma. And then there's a third type, which is a karma. We can't stop from acting, right? We're doing something all the time. Nobody can say that they're doing absolutely nothing at all. So we are going to do something. And the point is, what we should try to do is spiritual activities. And if somehow we can dovetail all of our activities, all of our karma, all of our prescribed duties into spiritual activity, then our lives are successful. So for a mother, for example, her duty, part of her duty, it will be to look after the children, to look after the household, which is such an important role. And cooking. There will be cooking. So cooking will be done. That's prescribed duty. But if that cooking is done in a way that it enhances, it, it, it is connected to God, we can make it bhakti. So, for example, we cook and we eat. Something missing there. Very easy to make that a spiritual activity. Cooking and eating. In between, cooking, offering that food to the Lord and then eating, we've converted a, a normal activity into a spiritual activity. And this is very, very powerful. Simply adding one um, one process in what we're doing, we are making our lives successful. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Offering can even be in the mind. If the facility is not available to do a proper offering to the Lord, on a, in a plate, on, a, on the altar, in front of the Lordship's brain, please accept this offering. Even one can make the offering simply within the mind. And um, as long as we are doing it sincerely, it will be accepted by the Supreme Lord. So we are turning one act, which is a normal, ordinary act, into a spiritual act. This is very, very powerful. But Krishna also warns Arjun, don't try to understand karma. Because you remember, we are doing all sorts of activities every day. Good sometimes, bad sometimes. There's such a big mixture. So whatever's coming to us has come from the past where we have done so many different activities, different levels of karmic activities that it's very hard to ascertain. Why am I going through this particular problem? Or why am I benefiting from this particular event? So... We don't bother trying to understand karma. We just accept uh, that whatever is happening to me, it's because I've done something in the past to deserve it. And I will take responsibility. I will accept it. I will not um, question God. I will not 
ask God, why me? <laughs> so this is this is actually empowerment. Uh, we are equipping ourselves to take responsibility. Yes. I am going through this particular situation. Sorry, sorry Prabhuji. Yes, yes. Go for it, Madhuban. So, from three, this karma, mm. uh, only we, when we are human being and in our mm. life, mm. only we have to think about a karma, right? Whatever we do, whenever yes. we do any activities, just yes. keep in, only we have to keep in mind that our karma is our duty. Excellent. Because in a only human form of life, this opportunity comes. In the animalistic form of life, karma has no impact on them because they cannot distinguish between right and wrong. Yeah, but sometimes, hmm. it's a silly question, but sometimes <laughs> we try to do ah. not other karma, just, just yeah. concentrate in a karma, but other people surrounding us they put you in some other difficult situation and sometimes you act different way if yes. you don't if you don't want still you have to you you it make you to do that you know yes so, i know so who's this responsible god <laughs> We, <laughs> no, we are, we still, see Arjun asked that same question, but in a little different way. He said to Krishna, my mind is very stubborn, very mm. strong, very flickering. Mm. And to control it, for me, it's easier to control the wind than to control the, my mind. <laughs> so yeah. same, it's sort of what you're saying, but a little different angle. You're mm. saying, other people, when you are in that company, makes you do things which you don't necessarily want to do. Mm. But the fault is still with us. <laughs> mm. Because our it's mind good. is not strong enough to say yeah. no. no. Yeah. yeah. Um, Even sometimes, you know, Madhuben, it's polite to do something yeah. which is expected from us. And we will do that to be parliament. That's good. Mm. Because we don't want to disturb others. That's good. That's right. That's what I'm trying to... Huh. Ask. That's good. But even then, within us, we should still understand, I should not be doing this, and I'm only doing this, my dear Lord, as an offering to you, because I don't want to upset that person. If I will upset that person, you will also get upset. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... If we do it in such a mentality where our focus is God, or to please God, even we might have to do something ridiculous, right? But the, it, we're still doing it uh, with some, under, with a lot of understanding that, my dear Lord, I don't really want to do it, but I don't want to upset that person. Please somehow make this happen in such a way that it doesn't also offend you. But so, you have to, uh, sorry, you have yeah. to explain God as well. God knows yes. that. Yes, 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 yes. No, at God every I... level, at every level, we, okay. we we focus on God at every level. You know, because something I, I know, I, I know, it's my habit. Hmm. I do something right hmm. or wrong, I don't know, but I ask, I always say, whatever you made, you made me to do this anyway, I always <laughs> I always your say, fault. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm honest. I'm honest with you. I always say, whatever I did, you made me to do. I didn't want to do that one. But, <laughs> but mm -hmm. so I always uh, ask to forgive me anyway, the other way. Uh, <laughs> but it's so difficult. It's so difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always think he knows anyway. He's looking everywhere. He, he, why he put me in this situation? So I sometimes I, I argue with him, is, him as well. And, and yeah, yeah, you should argue with him. Hey, my dear Lord, I want to serve you. I want to do my best for you. Please put me in a situation where I can really put my best effort, you know? No, absolutely. The thing is, we do have to take responsibility. We yeah. can't put everything on him. 
um, especially, you know, because he's a busy boy, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so we don't want to, you know, we, 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 I think um, we do need to bear in mind that we, we are responsible for our activities and anything that happens to us is as a result of something that we've done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Madhubin. I think Krishna doesn't get involved in our, what we we are doing in our karma, isn't it? We have to, what you want we to have inherited in the past lives, we carry this life. Hmm. Hmm. So, but what, what we are intentionally going to do is a karma so that our, the karma doesn't get built up. Correct. 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 That's a very nice way of uh, explaining it. Anyway. Very good. Thank you. Prof. And uh, there's also a very nice slok in the Bhagavatam. I uh, can't remember where it is, but it says that person who patiently uh, bears the weight of karma and yet still has complete faith in the Supreme Lord, the Lord will appear to that person very quickly. You know, So, you know, we know karma is going to come. We know we're in the material world. It's, it's not going to be easy in this world. But we don't, when difficulties come, we don't blame the Lord. We don't blame others. We don't blame the wife, the husband, the children. We understand this is my own doing. I, I accept. My, our Guru Maharaj used to very often say, you know, don't cry when something bad happens to you. You weren't crying when you were doing the crazy things, you know, <laughs> which led to that. So let it, let it happen. But we take shelter of the Lord, my dear Lord, you know. I I, uh, I understand that this is not your fault. It is not anybody's fault. It's my own doing, and I accept my I accept the responsibility. And um, we will see the burden, and and then have a laugh, laugh at ourselves. As soon as you start laughing, the burden eases. You know, the burden eases. Um, the Lord makes it. Uh, not easier actually. Anyway, he makes it easier anyway. And this is the attitude of devotee, you know. Whatever I'm due to suffering, suffer, it's supposed to be a lot worse, but the Lord has minimized it. So this is how um, devotees accept uh, you know, unfortunate situations. Okay. Uh, anything else? I would think this is a really important topic actually to debate and talk about. Because it's very practical and we can actually put it in practice in our life and make a difference to our life. Just one point, Prabhuji. Hmm. When it's very easy to blame others, but it's very hard that you take your own responsibility. Hmm. It, the, the, what I'm suffering is because of my own karma. Hmm. That is humanity. That is humility. Accepting okay. your own karma as a result, and if if you are going through any bad patch in your life, it is. Yes, you're right. It's very, very. It's difficult. It's difficult. Very it is difficult. difficult. Always blaming others. <laughs> we want to blame others, but it's very empowering as well. As soon as you think, actually, you know what? This is my fault. What happens is the mind becomes free of anxiety. It becomes free of mm -hmm. hatred. Oh, it's my own fault. I can't blame um, Jenti because of. She didn't make me my masala chips. <laughs> you know, it's my fault. It's my own fault. So there's a relief that that comes with accepting that responsibility. Does that make sense, Nani Ben? Yes, exactly. That is, it is. But as you said, in the families, all these fighting that's going on, emotional, <laughs> yeah. it, it is due to not accepting that it's my mm. own fault. Yeah, true. That's true. That's very nice. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Prabhu? Oh, yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Well, I've, I've been listening. I know yes. um, it's good to listen sometimes, like what Mother Ben asked. Mm. My, my, this is not my question. I say, as you said, we can talk it up. What about the karmas which you have done in the past, the bad one? In in this life, hmm. when they come, 
you, you mean when those no, we, if we have done bad karmas ah, in, in this, this life, life which we haven't yet with them how to come out from them right 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 what you're saying how, is how how will i how um, will i able to yes, uh, yes. Well, hold on let me just say how hmm. what shall i tell god forgive me what <laughs> i have done in the past hmm. or how at present we are doing our karma a lot like as you said yes. lot do a lot of spiritual activities like cooking and doing the housework and even mm. doing uh, things for your family you just said that we are doing i'm doing uh, this good to thing for not for my son because it, there is a art mind side and i'm said i'm doing for you god not for the son you understand what i'm saying you know? yes yes at present my husband is no well and i'm yeah. looking after him but i'm mm. just, just telling that no i'm looking after him but it's got this inside him and i'm trying my That's best it. to do it, do it excellent excellent but what what about the karmas you have done in the a bad karma in this life part? yes in, in this, this yeah, in this life that? and we know so sometimes i have Uh, lied or sometimes yes, I, yes, yes. I mean I'm open I will definitely I'll, I'll talk it out open mm. so what happened with those comes yeah. this is actually Parikshit Maharaj asked this question of Sukadev Goswami you know what happens to those who have done you know crazy things what happens to them so Parikshit uh, Sukadev Goswami answered in many different ways firstly he said well uh, they there will be punishment and you know it then then he describes different types of hells if if our karma is so bad you know we might have to suffer there so then parikshit maharaj asked him how can uh, one avoid going to hell so then sukadev goswami explained yes you can atone you can ask for forgiveness from the lord you can do activities which uh are uh countering the bad activities say for example one one devotee for example accidentally killed a cow when he was driving right so our guru maharaj he explained to that devotee now what you have to do to counteract this is to go to haridwar and donate a golden cow small one pure gold to a brahman in haridwar in order to counteract that sin so where we know we have done sins there may be things that we can do to reduce those those um, to reduce the karmic reaction but then sukadev goswami said to uh, parikshit maharaj said to sukadev goswami no that's not good because the sin is still in my heart how do i get rid of my my what is something in my heart which is causing me to do the bad karma so then uh, sukadev goswami answered very good very good i've been waiting for you to tell ask me that so he said <clears throat> if we take to bhakti if we take to chanting of the holy names sincerely what that will do it will take out the root cause of sin from our heart so we will not sin again and when we engage in bhakti automatically the lord takes charge of that person and anything that happens to that person because the lord has taken charge even if it's we think it's bad actually it's good for that person because the lord has taken charge so this is the point nani uh, prabhavin that if we've done anything wrong yes we know what we've done wrong simply we have to take shelter of the lord take shelter of the lord and whatever he wants we will accept we will not argue with the lord because we know he will only do something which is good for us does that make sense prabhu yes yes more thank you thank you thank you no thank you <laughs> this is really important actually thank you uh, hari krishna everybody thank you so much huh? prabhu thank you so much Yes, yes. isn't it that once we do any karma it will it has to come back we have already planted a seed 
So yes. To go through the process, isn't it? I know we have to take shelter of the Lord, which mm. may have been somewhere, but mm. anything that we do, we have planted the seed, it can fructify now it or will. in the future. Uh, it will. It will fructify. It has to be, isn't it? Because it the, to the Lord will not interfere, as you said you know, before. Yes. He will not interfere. But, you know, this is the Lord. <laughs> and the Lord is so gracious, you know. We don't even want him to interfere. This is my karma, my Lord. Let me go through it. It's okay. You know, I still, just make sure I don't forget you. <laughs> yeah, with Ajamil, Lord took control of him. But the thing is, um, what was I saying? Yes, the, the, our karma we will have to go through. But the devotee's mood is always, it should have been much worse. Mm, yes. And the Lord has actually minimized it, even though I have not requested him to do so. Because the Lord, you know, he is so, he, he, you are, we are the most important thing to him. If you look at how he used to interact with the gopas in when they were having the picnic, each gopa would think, Krishna is only with me, nobody else, right? The Lord counts us so important. He will give us all of his importance. This is the magnanimity of the Lord. You know, he's so magnificent. You will feel there's nobody else in this world except me and him at this moment in time. And of course, that's not true. <laughs> there's so many other people. There's Radharani. There's some, but the Lord will make you feel that you are the only person who's important. And that's why when we take shelter of him, he just takes control of our life. And things may happen. Yes, it will happen. Karma will come. Uh, but that will only make us stronger towards our faith towards him, you know. Thank you, Prabhu. No, thank you. Thank you. It's a really nice discussion. Thank you so much, huh? uh, everyone. Uh, Madhu Ben, Prabhu uh, Ben, Nani Ben. Uh, Karuna, anything you'd like to share? Anything, uh, Jenti, you want to share? No, I just that example of Ajamil. Um, mm. You know, um, when he did realize mm. that he knew he had to atone, and he mm. did that for about twelve years. You know, mm. so. It's like you, if you serve the devotees, then mm. your karmic reactions will uh, decrease over time. I think that that's the best lesson that we can really learn. Mm. We realize that we've done something wrong, then that's how we we have to atone by serving the Lord's devotees. That's a good point. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay, let's stop there. Sanatan Dharma Ki Chai.